Welcome, uh, great group. Today is December 14th, 2016, and this is Role Play Call number 14. I think it's the biggest group we've had for the Role Play Call, so thank you so much, guys, for showing up. Um, we were just saying this is a little different than the Mastermind Call. Try to keep your questions like in the form of a role play. And you could be the agent, or Chad can be the agent. He's, he's fearless. We haven't uh, stumped him yet, but please share with us um, issues you have, places you're getting stuck, you know, maybe opportunities that you're missing to close, you know, things like that. And you're all muted out right now, so who wants to go first? Um, hit star six <coughs> and then hit one, and you'll get put into the queue, and then I will um, – I will unmute you one at a time. Well, until we get somebody in the queue. Um, star, six, star six and one, guys. Come on. Go ahead, Chad. So for those of you on the call who I haven't met yet, my name's Chad Corbett. I'm one of the co-founders and the trainer at All the Leads. So I have the opportunity to uh, – people report back to me. So they, they hear my voice or they've met me at a show or, or something, and people report back after their first round of prospecting or even before they start prospecting. And one of the most common things I hear from newer agents who are just starting in prospect or just starting in probate prospecting is, you know, well, I'm getting a hold of these people. You guys have awesome phone numbers, but, you know, they just – everyone's telling me to call back in 90 days or – I had this great conversation and, and you know, they said to call back in, in two months, so I'm going to do that and I can't wait. And reality is in two months, at least 50% of those opportunities will be listed by your competition. So one of the things that I'm constantly coaching people on is, is recognizing a false objection and taking advantage of that or creating an opportunity out of that. So when someone understand the mindset these people are in, so they are in a very overwhelming situation, they've, you know, especially this time of year, they've got their life coming at them and then someone else has handed them a life and said, here, ethically and efficiently unravel this while the whole world watches. So they're kind of overwhelmed. They don't know what to do first. And usually in that initial phone call, they haven't made any decisions because they haven't quite gotten over that you know, through that dip, like it's, yeah. So when you ask them for an appointment, if you're, if you're in a good conversation and you go for the appointment and they, they give you that false objection of all, oh, I have to talk to my wife, get a house cleaned out, yada, yada, yada. Why don't you call me back in one day, one week, three weeks, three months, whatever it is. Oftentimes that's, it's an indication that you've gotten them to the edge of their comfort zone. And really our job as professionals is to build rapport with these folks and show them ways that we can help them to kind of pull them from one stage of comfort zone to the next, as long as we know it's in their best interest. So a lot of people will just say, okay, well, well, I'm sorry, I'll, I'll make sure I'll, I'll call you back in a month or two. And then they hang up. Well, you've, you've now lost a great opportunity to, to you know, progress asking good questions. So I, I made a video yesterday that I'll it's post, uh, It'll be on next Tuesday's blog post. And if you guys haven't, uh, if you didn't get a chance to look in the Facebook group or on the blog yesterday, you can kind of see I'm, I'm doing a series called Tips from the Trainer where we'll kind of unpack some of these objections. But a lot of folks give up on, on the first sign of an objection. They give up and they'll apologize and say, I'll call you back or I'm sorry I called you. And a lot of times that's the first sign of a live prospect. Um, so if anybody has any objections that you're hearing, on the phone that you are if anyone just thought holy crap i did that last week step up jump in the hot seat and let's role play through some of this we can always learn more from an actual role play situation than just hearing me talk about you know why why you should do it we've got over 45 people on the call and nobody is volunteering yet <laughs> just just so you guys know uh you don't have to be the agent chad will be the agent hit Hit Chad with your toughest objection, something – and it could be something either you have gotten or you think you're going to get. Uh, I, I, th I, I Being the, the sales guy, I'm always amazed how the agents think they're going to get blasted for bothering these people, and then it hardly ever comes up. Uh, you know, so I, that was my other, my other rant for the week, and I also I posted a blog about that yesterday if you guys look on the Facebook group. So many people talk themselves into call reluctance, even good prospectors, just because they've never 
prospect of probate. Oftentimes, I talk to agents who they have convinced themselves before they ever pick up the phone that a surviving spouse is going to think they're the devil and that everyone else is going to call them an ambulance chaser and that the world's going to hate them for trying to reach out and help. And, and it, it's so untrue. This is one of the most accepting and rewarding niches of business you'll ever have. So, so many people have trouble just getting on the phones in the first place. And if you guys are in that position, step up and raise your hand. I mean, this is, there, there's no judgment here. This is a really transparent call for, for your benefit, not ours. So, you know, it's every, a lot of folks on this call are brand new and have never been on the phones. If there's something keeping you from getting on the phones, um, you know, if, if there are objections you're hearing, Start. Otherwise, Jim and I are just going to talk about yeah, Christmas shopping that's and the for weather. 30 minutes. We've never had one of these where nobody stepped up, so uh, really? hopefully everybody's not on this call while they're doing their holiday shopping. Hit, hit star six and then hit one, and I'll see right away that you're in the queue, and I will unmute you. There's got to be one of the 40 people on the call that has something they need to discuss with us. Star six and then hit one. I wonder if the – there we go. We have a winner. Thank you very much. <laughs> someone someone from Florida is in the queue, so thank you for, for stepping up. And the rest of you, come on, guys. We want some participation. Star six and hit one, and you'll be next up. And let me go to the brave first person. Thank you very much. Uh, hi. Okay. Uh, hi there. Okay, so our question, um, you know, you guys are talking about when you see that it's the surviving spouse, they're living in the home. So a lot of the times we call these people and, and, you know, they're right away, you know, they're hard exterior. Oh, I'm not selling. And so what are your, what are you guys saying to get around that? What is a good objection? Okay. So you be, be the agent and call Chad, please. Okay. Ring, 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 ring. Okay. Actually, you you want, you want me to be the agent and you kind of give me what you're hearing. That's what I meant. I'm sorry. You be the, Chad, you be the agent and you call her. That's fine. I'm sorry. What's your name? What's your name? Nicole. Nicole? All right, Chad, call Nicole, please. Ring, ring. Hello? Hi, is this Nicole? Yes, this is. Can I ask who's speaking? Hey, hey, this is Chad Corbett. I actually sent you a letter last week, and I just wanted to follow up and make sure that you guys had, had gotten that and understood why we sent it. Do you remember seeing a letter from, from Chad Corbett? Uh, I believe so, yes. Okay. Well, well, the reason we reached out, we actually have built a system here locally where we help families who inherit properties, and part of that is doing research at the courthouse, and we noticed that you were the executor of an estate and just wanted to see if there's any way that we may be able to help you out. So, no, I'm keep I'm living in the, or I'm keeping the property. Okay. Well, I mean, selling homes is one of the things we help with. There's a lot of other things that, that our team can do. I mean, are you guys, you plan on staying in the property? Are you going to turn it to a rental or is now? Well, we're not sure something? yet. Okay. All right. Well, I'll just I kind of give you an idea of what we do. I mean, we, we try to look at the family's goals and really understand where you are. Um, and then through our, our our team, I mean, we have everything from senior moving services to, um, you know, clean out crews, uh, estate sale companies. We can help you downsize your home if you're going into a condo or moving in with family. Um, all the way to, you know, getting homes completely renovated and sold for top dollar to, you know, produce money for that, that next stage of life. So if there's, you know, anything that kind of <clears throat> in that transitional period, we've we really – pride ourselves on having a team that can handle just about anything that would come up for families in that in that situation. So it like I said, it really starts with us understanding what your goals are. We can kind of sit down and give you some options and introduce you to the right people on our team. Uh, maybe maybe that includes selling, maybe it doesn't. Um, there's a lot of different ways we can help folks. Would it, I mean, would you want to meet up on Friday for say 30 minutes just to kind of get an idea of what we could offer to help you guys? That would be great. <laughs> okay. No, you were too easy. You're too easy. <laughs> I so the, I ad, the idea, <laughs> the ahead, idea is to remember that, that you can do a lot more than just be a listing agent. 
Uh, the reason I always encourage people to call the spouse is my very first probate deal called and said, I'll never sell my damn house. Quit sending me letters. And I said, okay, thank you. <laughs> and two months later, that lady's life changed in a heartbeat, literally. And her daughter called me because the letter was still on the coffee table. And her daughter was overwhelmed, heartbroken, had no idea what to do. The house had been on the market for 12 months, no showings, no offers. And she was just a mess. I said, all right, well, I'll be over and give me two hours and I'll be over. And I sat down with her and I said, here are some options. And I gave her the option of a cash purchase, selling as is, or selling on creative financing, which we just did a lease option with a buyer who had to move their credit score, like maybe, maybe 20 points. Hmm. And we ended up selling that house with multiple offers. We literally had two people fighting over the house, um, which is really rare here. And we sold it the first day for $25,000 more than it had expired at. And for me, a light went off. I'm like, how many more people are there like this? And that's really where probate started for me. But it was one of those deals. It was, had I, had I scrubbed the list and said, well, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna hurt anyone's feelings. But instead I look at it as, you know what? I'm doing the right things for the right reasons. And all I'm doing is reaching out to help people. And if I get blasted or someone calls me a name, I'm not going to take it personal. It's, it's, you know, the, the judgment is judgment comes from within the other person. Right. So mm -hmm. I know what I'm doing is the right thing. <laughs> and I know I've helped a lot of people. So some people will get their feelings hurt. Some spouses will say, I'll never sell. Statistically 88% of, of senior citizens uh, or American citizens over the age of 65 report that they will spend their entire life in their house. And we know that's not true because the nursing home industry is one of the fastest growing industries in the country. So people, you know, you, there's life can change in an instant. So the best thing you can do is reach out to those folks, help them understand the value that you can bring to their situation and that they, there's someone out there that's got their back, even though they're overwhelmed. And you might not close it in that conversation but the phone might ring tomorrow or next week or next month when they really, really need your help. Because oftentimes it's property maintenance becomes a huge issue for folks. Finances become a huge issue. And if they're in that, you know, the early stages of grieving and in denial, or they, they just haven't thought it through because of the pain so much, then when they do think it through, if they're holding a letter from you or they can remember a nice conversation where you tried to help in any way you could, you're going to be the, the first part. You're going to be front of mind and the only real estate professional they even consider. Um, they just might not be there yet. So just try to be empathetic and, and provide value anywhere you can, any way you can. And a lot of that business will come back to you. Hey, Nicole, hold, hang on just one second, Chad. Also, uh -huh. if, you, if you would, Chad, comment on one of the most common questions the new agents ask me is, do you have a script for calling the people? And I know you have an opinion. I, I was a coach for one of the major coaching organizations. I used scripts for years. And, Chad, you sort of have an opinion on scripts for probate. And tell them where they can find your, your uh, seller's questionnaire that, that, that you suggest that they use. Would you comment on that briefly? And then, Nicole, if you don't mind, it, by the way, star six and hit one. Otherwise, uh -huh. this is going to be the Nicole show for 30 minutes. <laughs> and we don't, and we, that's okay, Nicole. Thank you for stepping up. Would you – you. You would you, hang on there. Hang on for a minute, if you would. Chad, okay. would you comment on that as far as what script to use when you're calling them back? Yeah, so this this is because of the scope of what we what we teach you guys to do. It's incredibly hard to script. And I'm always hesitant to script out something that goes in one direction because there, there's I don't want to put blinders on anybody. However, my business partner, Tom, who friend, is head of our support, has requested for the 1013th time. So I actually did sit down and write out a script last week that actually does follow the probate seller interview sheet. And if you haven't done fast track training and you're a subscriber, um, you should go do that right now. And step three, right around the eight minute mark, you'll hear me talk about um, sales scripts and, and the progress, the, the initial phone call. And what we've used up to now is what we call the probate seller interview sheet. And I believe it's more important to teach you guys the progression of a conversation and why you should be asking good questions in the right order versus just telling you to say this, say this, say this. 
Um, you'll probably see that script that I wrote out. I, I don't, I'm not sure if it's been added to, to step three yet. I will post it in the Facebook group right after this call, um, just in case it hasn't been. But ideally, if you can listen to these calls, kind of listen to some of the past calls, and in order to do that, you log into the subscriber portal on the left-hand side, click on conference calls, and then you can search by month. You'll, you'll, you'll see four mastermind calls and one role play call each month for the last year or so. But the best thing you can do is get that probate seller interview sheet, listen to those past role play calls, and kind of work on your own language, having your own question and getting comfortable with that progression. If you aren't achieving that, then go to the go to the script that I wrote out and, and give it you know, give that a shot. And if you ever need any help, guys, please raise your hand, and say, Hey, I don't I wasn't about to role play on that call, but can someone help me one on one? And we'll do that. Um, I, I help people pretty much every day. So if you if you don't want to do it publicly here and you haven't gotten where you think you should be, just please send an email to support at all the leads and raise your hand so we can help you out. Nicole, looks like the other 49 people on the call have it all figured out. So I'll <laughs> star six and hit one. I'd love to have somebody else participate. But since you since you raised your hand and you were nice enough to share, are you have you started making calls yet, Nicole? Yeah, so we've been doing this for a little over a year. We've been okay. um, sending, you know, making the calls, making the calls. We just started getting back into the letters. Um, we took a break from the letters for a little while, so just some trial and tribulation. Um, you know, a lot of the times I can relate to people and, you know, try to be kind with them and speak with them. But my biggest thing was, again, you know, when they tell me, well, you know, they get angry with me and they say, well, I do not want to sell this home or, you know, and it's like, okay, my response to that is just, okay, well, you know, we're here to help you in, every, in whatever way that we can help you. Um, these are our services, a little bit different from what Chad was saying. So I did take some good notes on some of the things he offers and adds value right. to, um, you know, and, and then it's kind of like, you know, please take down my number. I try to get an email for them. This way I can keep in contact with them that way. Um, and that's usually the end of the conversation. Nicole, we do have somebody else in the queue, but I want to ask you what, out of all the people you've talked to, what percentage, what percentage do you think actually get upset with you? Um, maybe only 5% are actually mean, you okay. know, there, there's not a whole bunch of people that are mean, but there's probably a higher percentage that just say no. Maybe 10%, 20, or do you think it's higher than that? Maybe about 25% of the people on the list are just saying no, I okay. don't want to sell, I'm living gotcha. here. Or... You know, it kind of reminds me of your, you know, you're shopping for clothes and you walk into the department store and the salesperson walks up, can I help you? What, what's the first thing you usually say? You're not nasty, but the first thing you say is, "No, I'm just looking." Well, mm -hmm. you came you came there to buy something. <laughs> you just you just <laughs> didn't want to be you just didn't want to be sold. And I and I think that same same process happens in a phone conversation. You know, it's a defense mechanism more often than not. Like mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'm not completely sold yet, and don't try to sell me. Uh, you know, I'll let you know when I'm ready. Call me back later. So uh, I, I so hope that really. Go ahead, Chad. A really good, a really good question. You guys got my gears turning. So what I should have asked you, Nicole, is, you know, okay, well that's that, you know, that's that's fine. If you don't mind my asking, you know, because there's a lot of ways we can help. What what's your plan? And then that's just be plan. a really good listener. Okay. Open ended question. What, it's, what's your plan? It's a very telling. It's a very telling question for a lot of parts of the conversation. Even if even if you've engaged and somebody, you know, is planning to sell. Ask them what their plan is. So asking what their plan is or what their timeline is um, can tell you a lot about their motivation or the stage of the process. So if there is no plan, like especially if somebody wants to sell and there is no plan, then they need you more than anyone. Um, mm -hmm. If somebody doesn't want to sell and you ask them what their plan is and they don't have a plan, then there's a good chance they still might need you. Maybe they haven't thought about owning a four-bedroom house throughout the summertime when it costs $250 to get the lawn mowed because it's on an acre of land. Um, you know, maybe they haven't thought about that because it's December. So if you kind of get in and ask them, you know, well, what's, what's your plan? Maybe there's some way we can help you. 
And if they don't have one, just try to continue to ask good questions that will allow you to layer in value from your team or from, you know, from your service. Nicole, thank you so much. We do have one other person in the queue, so we will move on. Thank you so much for participating. Thank we you. appreciate you being brave and stepping up first. All right. Next up, the phone number ending in 0705. Uh, thanks also for uh, volunteering. You're up. Hi, Chad. Dave from Eric in Atlanta. Uh, we talked about this very thing yesterday, so I may have put that in your mind. I don't know. Um, in any case, I just uh, what you just said was excellent as far as asking what their plan is because I needed to call several people back uh, that had told me, well, just wait 60, 90 days, you know, whatever, 30 days. Um, but as far as the comment that was just made, um, I, I really got my list of 28 or 27 people, really only had one person that was – not nasty. She just said, I don't have to give you any information and then kind of hung up on me. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that was fine. And I didn't mind. I really don't get telephonophobia. You know, I don't mind calling. Um, but that was like, you know, when they started giving me this objection, you know, we talked about that yesterday. Uh, you know, I, I just thought, you know, I should have probably asked them, well, what is, you know, your plan? And yeah, I can call you back, but why would you want to wait? Could we not get together and then press them for an appointment, which is the stance I'm going to take at this point, is just to say, look, when are we, you know, when can you get together? I'd really love to see the house. And then I really, if they still oh, kind please, of... A let, me, let, me, let me interject right there. I, I would, I, I encourage you to rephrase that. So yeah. that that's kind of old school sales, right? So well, why why can we not meet? So try to just to accomplish the same thing. Try to rephrase it and say, well, you know what? But we we could absolutely I could absolutely do that. But I'd really like to meet with you because. So what's what's in it for them? Instead of challenging them on why they don't want to meet with you, tell them how excited you are to show them X. You know, I really think you guys should meet with me because I can show, you know, we can sit down and kind of go through some of these options. And a lot of people, you know, you don't know what you don't know, Mr. S Mr. Seller. Um, a lot of people really are shocked to see all the things that we can do. So there's probably a lot of things that you haven't even thought of yet that we have because of our experience. And I'd, I'd just love to have the opportunity to sit down and kind of go through some of that. Um, yeah, that's, so, a, I mean, what, that's a perfect opportunity for your feel, felt, sound. Exactly. <laughs> you know, maybe give them that like matter of fact, Dave, sure do role play that with Chad real quick if you would. Um Chad, call Dave. We try to keep these in the form of a role play and, and try use the feel felt sound if you would. Give give him that objection. Chad Chad, call would you call Dave? Well let's uh, I'll just uh, Dave, I'm gonna well, take start it from, where take I'm... it from that yeah, take it from that point. That's fine. Yeah. So Dave, it, it sounds like uh you guys could could use some help, and we've got a great system. I, I'd love to meet with you guys on. I've got one spot on Friday at one. Does that work for you? Well, I just thought we would put it off for maybe sixty days because we really don't know what we're doing with the property yet. Okay. Well, fair enough. If if that's what you want to do, that's fine with me. We'll definitely be in business in sixty days and and be doing the same thing we're doing now. I will say that it's what we. In my experience working with many families are in, in the area, what we find is most people have, have – most of our clients have felt the same way you do. They, they're kind of overwhelmed. They just want to wait a bit, kind of catch their breath and take inventory, so to speak. But what they what they find is that once we actually meet and they, they realize what they didn't know or what they hadn't considered, we can actually take a lot of that pressure off of them. And a lot of the things that we offer – can really take a lot of it off of their plate because I mean you have a lot of responsibilities in addition to the real estate and we understand that so if we can help you by coordinating a lot of that or taking a lot of the stress away from you I, I think you know that's that's why we, we try to you know we try to meet with people as soon as we can um, if it's 60 days from now when you guys are ready that's fine but I would love to have the opportunity to sit down and kind of show you some of the things that, that I'm talking about and what we could do. So would Friday at 1 be a good time to spend 30 minutes or so? Um, <laughs> sure. <laughs> you but know, I was, what I was yeah. looking at when I was, while you were saying this is I would probably tend to get a little salesy at this point 
and probably say, look, um, part of, you know, let me re-explain the four options that we, you know, told you about in the letter. And, oh, by the way, you know, we could probably get, you know, top dollar for the price more than another agent. You might want to consider a full-time realtor instead of a part-time or just, you know, thrown out you know, a number of items, but I, I think maybe like we discussed yesterday, maybe it's just better to keep it on a personal soft sort of level and not get too salesy because that's probably just going to drive up their resistance. I think just trying to rationale, give them a rationale as to why you want to meet and Hey, it's only 30 minutes. And, you know, of course, knowing you'll get there, it might be an hour, but or more, so but, some of the things, but at least some of the just to get the said, Some of the things you said about other realtors and your selling system and how quickly you sell homes, all the stuff that you hear most real estate coaches talk about, right. those are to get listings. You need to do that when you, like, you may need to do that to get a listing. We're not right. even talking about the listing. Right now, we're, we're, trying to get a, we're trying to get an appointment. So we're going to yeah. focus on people and people only until we have an appointment. You have the rest of your career to tell them how great you are and learn about the house and talk about the address and the bedrooms and the – like, you have all kinds of time for that. Until they trust you and they believe that you care about them and they are willing to meet with you, there's no other objective. Focus on the people, get the appointment, and then learn everything else. Right. Yeah, I totally agree. And I'm really not salesy in general, but – I just realized sometimes, you know, in the past, you know, to get past, you know, you had to get salesy. But I think in this case, just being better to be sensitive because they're already in a tough position and they're already, you know, a PR trying to figure out what they're going to do as it is. Uh, but, you know, being sensitive, I like the what's your plan because it does ask an open-ended question and it's not, you know, making them get resistant to just like, oh, well, I don't know. I really thought. And then they can maybe begin to think, you know, what well, you might be able to help them with. One you know. thing you did there too, Chad, that was great. Um, it reminded me of my example of the person at the uh, department store. You said, you know, we may get together and you may still decide not to list for a couple months. Be like the sales clerk saying, hey, I'm slow right now and I'm not on commission anyway. Let me show you what we got. You know, no pressure to buy. As soon as you take off the pressure, that you're not going to try to twist their arm, it kind of opens them up, I think, to listening to what you have to say. And you, you did a really good job of that. And the reality is when you sit down with them, you may not list it for a couple months, but you're going to have about a 500% better chance of getting the listing eventually if you meet with them face-to-face -face or if it's a, you at least get a phone, you know, if they're out of town, you at least get a phone presentation scheduled than if you just put off and say, I'll call you in a couple months. Because like you said, Chad, a lot of them are going to be listed by the time you call them back. Yep. So. Yeah, that was my biggest fear is, you know, when I called Chad, because I was like, dang it, you know, someone else is probably going to get this <laughs> listing. And it's a little awkward having to call them back two days later, you know, or three days later today. Yeah, um, it's going to make you so good the next time you hear it up front. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, like I said yesterday, it's going to be way harder to call and reopen that conversation. So it's good for everybody else to hear, and thank you for chiming in. Like, if you miss that opportunity, if you give up too soon, yeah. then you have to go back two months later and start all over. So yeah. when, you've, when, you, when you've got a conversation moving, keep it moving and know that, you know, if you believe it's in their best interest to do business with you, then keep it moving forward. Don't give up. Right. And the people were nice enough. It wasn't like they were objecting to meeting. They just were trying to push it off because it just was maybe their way of objecting to doing something now about it. <laughs> but right. but um, this is helpful. And yeah, I did want to just chime in because I thought it, it could help others because I'm, like you said yesterday, it comes up fairly frequently. And that's just one way to you know, to get around it. But I, I, I like the what's your plan question. And I have used the illustration of, look, you know, just like when you're shopping, you know, we don't, we're not trying to cost you at the door. We just want to hang around so that we can be there when you need us, you know, so. Perfect place to end, guys. Thank you so much. Uh, thank we're, you. Right at, we're right at 30 minutes. I really want to thank our two participants, Nicole and Dave, as well as the silent 48 that were on this call. Uh, we understand, and I hope, you know what, the good news is 
I think every single person stayed to the end. So hopefully you guys got some value from this. And please come back tomorrow at 1 o'clock Eastern time, uh, same phone number for our regular mastermind call. That's a, You don't have to make a Jeopardy format for that one. You do, it doesn't have to be a role play. That's an open and, you know, open question, open forum uh, format. So I always like to end all also, these calls. Go ahead, Chad. Something you want to add? Before you, before you close out, sure. um, I do want to say, so if, if you're not in our um, mastermind group on Facebook, please go look, search um, all the leads mastermind. And it's a closed group, so you'll have to request access. If there's something that you didn't hear today that you wanted to hear, if there's something that you wish we would have role played and you didn't speak up, um, just drop a line on the Facebook group and say, hey, how do you how do you address this? Um, I'm going to try to do a better job of capturing some of this on video and, and blog posts and different things. So if, if you guys aren't hearing what you came to hear, uh, and hopefully the silent 48 are, you know, applauding and saying, hey, we got everything we came looking for. But I have a feeling somebody's got questions that they didn't get answered. So you can drop it on the Facebook group or email support at alltheleads.com, and we'll reach out to you. Awesome job, guys. I always like to end these calls by challenging you. You took 30 minutes of your time to be here today. So take one of the ideas that were generated by Dave or Nicole today and go out and put it into practice and come on our call tomorrow or come on our call any Thursday and share it with the group, guys. Thank you so much for being here, and we will talk to you in less than 24 hours. Make it a great day, guys. Take care.